So I've just been listening to one of Daniel Kennedy's latest podcast episode. So he has a podcast called The Blueprint Podcast. And if you're into properties, uh, business, all that sort of stuff, I'd highly recommend you look out for a podcast called The Blueprint Podcast, if you've not heard of it already, uh, and listen to some episodes. Um, they're, they're, they're very good. So anyway, in his latest uh, podcast, I think it's The Six Rounds with Simon Zucci, a, uh, one of the discussion points is on the topic of uh, JV partners. Uh, so they got onto the, um, a topic a uh, discussion about trust uh, and you know with JV partners absolutely you should have uh, everything written down everything in writing but ultimately if you do not trust that person then really you shouldn't be getting into business with them uh, I, I believe you know I, I'm on the same page uh, obviously do you do diligence first verify everything first have everything agreed and signed on a contract but ultimately, if you don't get along with that person and if you don't trust that person, you don't have to like really, really like them. You just have to be able to trust them and respect what they do. Then don't do business with them. Personally, I wouldn't do business with them. But anyway, uh, and that's got me thinking with, which I absolutely agree, by the way. Uh, but that got me thinking about what we do with our the letting side of our business. So specifically, when we are letting or when we are engaging with prospective tenants, you know, with the pre-vetting phase uh, and then onto the, the formal referencing phase. And really, if, uh, if I was to get to the point of it, ultimately, you should not be accepting an application from a prospective tenant if you don't trust them, if you don't have the right feeling about them, obviously, do the formal referencing first and verify everything um, because people are often wrong with their feelings. So hi guys, if you don't know me already, my name is Tu Nguyen. We let and manage high quality HMOs and single lets in and around Birmingham. Uh, and today I'm going to discuss the matter of trust or going with your gut feeling or not ignoring your gut feeling when it comes to doing references or going through applications for prospective tenant and I'll, I'll have a actually I've got a very I've got a live example in fact um, and there is so going back to my point when you're doing referencing when you're pre-vetting somebody you know you, you have you get a good sense of what they're like. You ask sort of fundamental questions. You, you ask your deal break questions, see how they engage with you, see how they are. And from there, you can tell almost instantly within the space of a few minutes if they are going to be a suitable tenant or not. Uh, once that's absolutely fine, then you uh, take the viewing in person. Um, you know, you can do virtual viewings, but only if they've got a very good reason for it. And in that environment, in that situation, you have to make sure that ideally they ask a friend or family member to take the viewing in person on their behalf so that they can get a third party to independently verify that that property exists and that we exist because you want to avoid potential issues further in uh, further along the application and uh, that's just a just a process thing. Um, at the same time, you also want to uh, take a virtual or live video viewing with them at the same time. So again, they can verify that you're at the property uh, and that you know their family or their friend is also taking the viewing in person. But you also get to engage with that person and see what they're like uh, because people on paper, people on the internet can be very different to what they're like in real life and you get to pick up on these cues and, and these uh, potential red flags anyway so that, that's just an aside secondly uh, then you go to the referencing the formal referencing stage that's when you do the credit checks landlord references bank statements you know all the documents all that sort of stuff but the, at that stage that's only to verify the things they have already told you uh, 
um, at the pre-vetting stage and also at the viewing uh, and really you try to make sure that all these things add up so maybe sometimes you would ask a question again um, you know to see if you're getting the same answer twice because that's uh, that's quite important uh, little things like that anyway so but ultimately if you don't have a good feeling about somebody then 100% you should look further into the application and you still don't get you just, you just do not feel 100% about that application then personally I would I do not accept them and that ultimately boils down to this topic of trust because a tenant once they have moved in and become your tenant that is a long-term relationship you are going to be having it's a long-term professional landlord or agent to tenant relationship and you must be able to trust them and they must respect and trust you it's, it's just so so important so from our side as the landlord or the letting agent if you've got if, you, if you've just got a, if you, you're just not feeling if you feel something is not quite right about a tenant and you're doing your formal references i would use that as a cue to look harder and you know if certain things just aren't right and you don't feel like you can trust them as a tenant I personally would not accept them and as an example actually just thinking about it would be a couple today um, they uh, came viewed a flat a few weeks ago and um, you know so they want to go ahead of it but just, you know something just didn't sit right they have um, they, it, so you know they're saying they don't have a landlord reference because they've been living at home fair enough that does happen but you know the picture doesn't really fully add up and then I've asked for the uh, employment contract and that took a while uh, and it, yeah, there was stories here and there uh, the it, the person on the contract wasn't the person that did the referencing which is you know sometimes it's normal uh, but a lot of things weren't adding up and then um, you know I also sent bank statements and just the way it was being presented to me uh, oh, uh, the stories that would come up and then the the length of time that would it would take to get a digital copy of bank statement those things are instant uh, and then uh, you know it, it just raised a lot of red flag a lot of alarm bells uh, you know for example they as an example the bank statement was a digital bank statement but they photographed it to a, to a degree whereby it was blurry so you couldn't actually see anything in detail and really all I wanted to do was just make sure that they are getting uh, a salary uh, every month and that they don't they have enough money at the end of the month to pay for their rent and also that's a sneaky one to see if they're paying rent because if they're paying rent then obviously they are renting uh, and for some reason they're trying to avoid having a, a landlord reference but anyway that, that's just one thing you keep an eye out for um, in this particular situation you know they sent me the, the bank statement it was um, blurry uh, they were coming from different banks which is weird uh, again red flag um, they didn't have sufficient funds at the end of each month uh, again yeah um, which is al already a no anyway because you can't pass forward bitty but at this stage I was just thinking oh you know what what's what else are they hiding uh, and then so I asked them to send me the PDF because you know if they download the PDF surely you just forward the PDF but they actually sent photocopies sorry they sent photos of that thing anyway um, which is illegible uh, and then it took them I think two days to send the PDF when they were in contact with me like all the time and so they eventually send it and when they send it the, the alignment on the um, on the bank statement just didn't seem right uh, and I you know at that stage well obviously they couldn't afford it anyway I didn't have money at the end of the month but 
yeah, I thought that enough was enough, and I don't think that it, you know, I, I just couldn't trust them at that point. So we rejected their application. Um, they didn't seem shock or surprise, uh, and that to me uh, says something. Uh, and they kept trying to rush the application. Um, and that to me says something as well. It, it sounds like they've been rejected before. So yeah, um, I guess it's one of those things you, you develop, it was one of the skills you develop once you're in the business or once you've been a landlord for long enough. You pick, on these, uh, pick up on these little red flags, these cues. Um, but ultimately, if, if you pick up these signals, these red flags, and you don't feel like you can trust this applicant, then personally, I would not accept them as a tenant. Uh, sorry, it, it's just not worth the risk. Uh, and obviously, there'll be you know, th this is assuming they don't pass on the reference anyway. Well, anyway, so I hope that's been helpful. My name's Two Nagrin. Um, if you like this sort of stuff, ramblings and things regarding properties, don't forget to like and follow for more. All right, see you.